One of the great aspects of the restoration work at Hancock Springs is that a conservation easement provided the foundation for the restoration work to follow. In this way, the, uh, the restoration work is protected um, through the conservation easement in perpetuity. So whereas normally you may have a 10 or 15 year landowner agreement, in this case, we in future generations know that the work that the restoration partners have completed will be there to benefit fish and wildlife. Kate Terrell, I'm with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Mid-Columbia Fishery Resource Office at Leavenworth, Washington, and I am the program lead for the Habitat Conservation and Restoration Program. Through this group, we've established the Upper Columbia Salmon Recovery Plan, and it, it was sanctioned by the local commissioners and the local landowners and approved in 2007. This particular project was proposed by Rubs Parish and he was working in conjunction with John Jorgensen of the Yakima Nation. Working in collaboration, they came up with a plan to restore a significant portion of Hancock Creek. So I know the unique function of this, this creek is that we were able to do a number of metrics to look at preconditions from a biological and a physical um, aspect. So we came in and took cross sections and pebble counts and looked at flows and velocities and, and looked at you know depths and, 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 and widths and, and wood counts and pebble size and really came through and tried to, to, to get a good idea of what this channel looked like before. We also came in and did a complete fish survey mm -hmm. and so we, we've got a number of um, fish attributes that look at fish density in all these different habitat types as well as your standard metrics of red counts. Um, we're going to go further and look at some of the production aspects and growth and survival uh, of fish within the treated areas and then also looking at fish outside of the treated areas. What we've tried to do is essentially scale the channel so that when flows come up in the early summertime, water comes right to the top of the banks and it doesn't spill over onto the floodplain in this case, but it fills up the bank full channel. We actually used mats that are custom grown from on-site seed sources. And what that allowed us to do is to stop any of the sediment from the banks, mobilizing back into the channel and really establishing a very stable bank right away. We're excited to work with the Hancock Springs landowners, not only to protect the values for fish and wildlife, but also for agriculture on the surrounding property. Uh, agriculture is an important part of our local economy here in the Methow Valley, and this project presented an opportunity to show how agriculture and salmon recovery can coexist hand in hand and actually complement.